Jenny. Jenny, if you want to be in this play, you better get a move on now, because we're running behind. Okay, Mom. Hey, Brett. Brett, where are you? Mom, Brett tried to hide my Indian moccasins, but I found them. Oh, you can scalp him later, honey. You got your costume? I think so. Moccasins, feathers. Good, good. And I packed your dress. Okay. So go on. Get in the wagon, Pocahontas. We're running late. Hey, Brett! Brett, we're leaving! Hey, you guys! Wait a minute! Come on! Mom said I can scalp you later, creep. <sighs> Sure. I was just kidding, Jenny. Okay, kids, buckle up. We're hitting the trail. Are we going to be late, Mom? Uh, oh, God. I, there's a lot of traffic out here today, Jenny. Just practice your lines or something. The land is good to my people. The land is good to Jenny, my Jenny, could you just be quiet a second, all right? Come on. Come on. Great. Uh, Mom? I think there's a train coming. Thank you, Brad. Anytime there's an accident where people die, it's a tragedy. But if you work for the railroad like I do, and the crash involves a train, you take it especially hard. For railroad people, there is nothing worse than a fatal crash at a highway rail grade crossing. In fact, any crash affects us. They're all bad, and you know why. It's an 8,000-ton train versus a two-ton car. Or worse, a train versus a person. And that's no contest. But it happens, and people die. Because they're stupid? No, they don't think. And they don't understand the danger. And they don't realize the fact that a moving train can't stop for you, period. Jack here is an engineer. Jack. What's the stopping distance of a train going 30 miles an hour? Well, depending on the size and weight, half a mile or better. And what if you're going 60 miles an hour? Take us over a mile to stop. This is what your car looks like from half a mile away. Like nothing. I mean, he can't even see you from a mile away. Why would a train stop for something it can't see? Or why would someone be on the tracks to begin with? Now, Mrs. Slayton was trying to save time by staying right behind the car in front of her, even though she ended up in the path of a train, boxed in with nowhere to go. Don't drive onto the tracks unless you can drive off the tracks. It makes sense, doesn't it? They're big, they're heavy, and it seems like they're everywhere. You get used to trains. You don't think of them as dangerous. 
And they're not, unless you get in the way. One way to get in the way is to ignore all the crossing signals and warning devices that are put there to save your life. So look at them, even the ones you pass every day. And don't ignore what they're telling you. So when you see a gate down or the red lights flash, don't take them for granted. They should trigger a warning in your head. Stop and don't drive around. When a gate is down, there's usually a train in the vicinity. If there's a train coming, you don't want to be in the crossing. What if the gate closes behind you? Simple. Drive forward, don't try to back up. Okay, what if you get boxed in? You can't back up and you can't drive forward. You get out, forget the car, and run away from the tracks, preferably toward the direction of the train. Your car will be history, but you will be alive. A lot of the bad crashes we hear about on the railroad are trains hitting people. It's not pretty. It happens when kids or grown-ups walk on the tracks where they shouldn't be in the first place. Hey, it's not just dangerous. It's against the law. But if you still want to do it, think about Tony Stanton, a kid who loved to fish. He never thought of fishing as a life-threatening sport until the day he tried to fish from a trestle. warning lights out here? Any gates or signals? Trains don't routinely blow their whistles out here. That's how they can be on you before you know it. Especially if you're like this guy. Frank is one of those rugged individualists who thinks that the rails are for his use as much as the trains. About all he could hear on this day was the sound of his two-cycle engine. Simply, tracks are for trains and nothing else. People who think differently are playing a losing game. By the way, this is another case where you should leave the vehicle if it gets stuck on the tracks. Believe it or not, some kids think a rail yard is a great place to play. The truth, with tons of heavy equipment in motion, it's about as safe as playing in the middle of a four-lane highway in rush hour traffic. But the big cars are often quiet, which makes them even more dangerous. Too many times it's happened just like this. In a rail yard, there's nothing to protect you from being instantly crushed or run over by tons of rolling steel. Believe me, this is no place to play. 
We can put up warnings at crossings, but we can't build a fence around every mile of track and every switch yard. That's why you have to use your head and steer clear of tracks and trains. Of course, kids aren't the only ones who forget the dangers. Steve, Janet, and Paco, they were old enough to drive, old enough to know better, but they didn't act that way. Hey, Paco, another brew. Yes. So we kick butt or what? Go Warriors! Boo, 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 boo. Yeah. <laughs> Our old college did us proud, boys. Boys? Hey, you're riding with men here. Yeah, you got to be going up with this ugly. <laughs> hey, at least my date showed up, Paco. Yeah, really? Hey, no problem, guys. I'll just get one at the party, that's all. Oh, look out, girls. Here comes the charm, my <laughs> So what's this, your grandma's car? Hey, hey. <laughs> Come on. Oh, we can't wait for a train. The girls will be gone by the time I get there. Go round it, man. I'm sorry, man. Here comes the choo-choo. You gotta get me there. I need a bathroom. Yeah, so get ready to punch me as soon as this baby goes by. All right, fasten right, your seatbelts, Warriors. Right. Prepare to lift off. tragic waste, only to save a few seconds. And the worst part is, it didn't need to happen. It never does. Their first mistake was the beer, of course, and that's asking for trouble. Then Steve purposefully drove around a crossing gate that was down, but he ignored it. Finally, he didn't see the second train coming because it was blocked by the first. He forgot about the second track. Where there are multiple tracks, there's always the possibility that one train is hiding another one. So wait until the gate is up and you have a clear path before you go. Don't dart across as soon as one train passes. If there's a second train coming on the other track, your first look at it may be your last. At night, it can be hard to see even the first train. Only the locomotive has lights. The freight cars and the rest of the train may be difficult to see in the dark. Your only clue may be a crossing gate and flashing lights. So when you drive at night, be sure you can stop in the distance covered by your headlights. In other words, don't overdrive your headlights. Trains do a lot of good for our country. They're a great way to move a large amount of products at a low cost. We need the trains, but we also need you, every one of you. That's the reason for Operation Lifesaver. So try to remember the few points that we've made about being safe when it comes to trains and highway rail grade crossings. Stay off the tracks and pay attention to those signals. Appreciate America's trains, but do it from a safe distance. <laughs>